Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to the Gene Rimsky Theater at Landmark on Main Street. Today starts our World Music Sunday series, which is free and wouldn't be possible without the grant support of the New York State Council on the Arts Rapid Relief Fund and a partnership with Long Island Traditions. We're very excited to have Panambi Vera for the very first of the series. We hope you come back and we invite you to come back to any of our shows, but we have on October 17th, Trinidadian Steel Drum Sensation, as well as November 28th, we have Peru and Dino, New York. Again, all the events are free. They don't require ticketing. We just require proof of vaccination and your ID at the door. We also have, as a part of Hispanic Heritage um, Celebration Month, Sonia de los Santos on October 9th. This is a ticketed show, it's a family show. She's fantastic, it's a great show for children and families to come on October 9th at 11 a.m. Please check our website out for all our events, landmarkonmainstreet.org. And you're always welcome to email me. My name is Kelly Rents Bruno, and I'm the manager of community affairs at Landmark on Main Street. I'm going to invite Eileen Condon up. She's representing Long Island Traditions. She'll talk to you more about the group, the cultural backgrounds of their attire, and she'll also be offering a Q&A towards the end if you have any questions, but also talking to the performers. Thank you again. Hello, and welcome again to World Music Sunday. Um, we're thrilled to have a partnership like this where um, Long Island Traditions can uh, fulfill its mission of preserving cultural and occupational traditions uh, that make Long, Island's, Long Island such an amazing place to live. Um, the, the group here is part of the programming that Long Island Traditions offers. And if you hadn't, haven't heard of Long Island Traditions uh, as a nonprofit uh, cultural preservation organization, I encourage you to like them on Facebook. Just look them up as Long Island Traditions. You can check out their website, Long Island Traditions, all one word, dot org. Um, Long Island Traditions uh, does a, a whole panoply of amazing cultural programming. They do uh, Bay House tours in Long Island. Um, they've uh, engaged in, in the preservation, historic preservation of certain neighborhoods uh, based on the architecture and the history. Um, they do maritime festivals to celebrate anything from boat building um, to uh, uh, fishing families' traditions. Um, and they also do programs like this, the performing arts, where um, a variety of uh, cultural traditions are represented through dance, music, song, and, um, and also arts and educational programs. So that's just an intro to Long Island Traditions. It was founded by Nancy Solomon. And um, tonight's program... Um, as you know, it features a, a dance ensemble, uh, Panambi Vera. And Panambi Vera was uh, a, a dance ensemble that came out of a family's love for the dance, the reclamation of Paraguayan dance. Um, and uh, there was so much love for that dance that um, Berta Gauto, uh, dance, who danced with a, a folkloric ensemble called Raina Poti, um, decided that she, was, she just had to pass this uh, form of dance on to everyone she could. She started with her own family, um, her daughter Ilyana, and um, she's um, built a, a performing arts ensemble that also teaches students. Uh, before the pandemic, they had as many as 30 students learning the dance. So the dances that you'll see this evening, um, Paraguayan traditions are a mix of indigenous and colonial uh, traditions. You'll see uh, the uh, Guaranya, you'll see the polka, uh, and the polka in, in this context in Paraguay is a, a mixture of um, the colonial polka uh, which tends to be very lively, and a wall. So there's kind of a synthesis of those ballroom dances that most of us are familiar with as, as colonial dances or kind of classical uh, forms of dance, uh, but they take on a different context in a different place. Um, and also the name of, of the band, uh, the group, um, Panambi Vera, it means uh, golden butterfly, and that comes from uh, a song about Paraguay and, and the beauty of Paraguay envisioned as a woman um, but also um, thinking about the way the dancers tend to look like butterflies. So you'll probably see that as you see the dance unfold on stage, that there is a sense of the monarch butterfly. Um, you'll also notice the costumes. The costumes um, have uh, this a special form of handmade lace 
um, incorporated into them, and that lace is called uh, spider web or nyan du ti. So you, that's another thing to notice in the costumes that you'll see this evening. So without further ado, I um, want to uh, bring um, the ensemble on stage and also stay tuned for a beautiful interlude that uh, there will be with um, a Paraguayan harpist and harp maker, and that's um, Silvio Solis. So that will be part of tonight's presentation. So again, um, welcome. I encourage you to take this moment to turn off your cell phones or set them to silent or vibrate, and um, please enjoy the program.
Welcome, everyone. My name is Ileana Gaudo, and I am part of Ballet Para Mi Vera. I started to dance with Ballet Para Mi Vera at the age of four, uh, as my mom is a director of the dance company and started us very young to help us understand and maintain our culture. Um, I just want to give you guys a little bit of information about the dances and about our traditions. Folklore is a very broad science covering many fields. This dance is a natural, spontaneous expression of our people made up of diverse elements, which upon acquiring their own characteristics became a root in the soul and are transmitted spontaneously by tradition from our parents to children. Folk dance is a dance of the people, constituted by spontaneous manifestations which are kept alive through generations, learned as a child by imitation of elderly. Hence, we call traditional Paraguayan dances the set of dances that constitute the property of heritage of our people. Folklore is undergoing transformations through time and space. The old customs are disappearing, or so they say. Some of our dances retain their old choreography, while others gradually incorporate new modalities, either in the form of realization of certain figures or modes of couple dances, which were approached by influences of modern dances. As a folkloric dance company, we aim to maintain our culture through traditional dances and music. Our dances represent stories of our ancestors and the way they saw the world. As we grow into the era of fast technology, we learn to slow down and appreciate the sounds of traditional mu instruments and stories of those who paved the way for us to grow. Thank you.
We now have Don Silvio Solis. Um, Elaine is going to give us a little introduction of Silvio Solis, the harpist. So, uh, with Don Silvio, we have a real treat in order here. Um, we have a, a, a harpist who is not only an accomplished uh, harpist um, in Paraguay, uh, but also the only person in the United States who's keeping up the tradition of building harps in the Paraguayan style. Um, so we'll have an opportunity to ask some more questions and have some more conversation about that. But the harp that you'll see um, that will be brought on stage um, is a harp uh, that Don Silvio made himself. He's made a total of about 30 harps, and he tends to make two harps at a time, and they take him about four months to make. He makes them out of spruce and cedar. Uh, the part of the harp that holds the strings is made of spruce, and the back part, that sort of bottom bass part, is made of cedar. And as you'll see, there are um, standard decorations that are on that. It's painted in a certain way that makes it um, characteristic of the Paraguayan harp style. Some people play them, he says, without the paint and all the decoration. And then uh, they're also personalized in various ways. And you'll see some interesting effects that have been added to his harp in particular. Um, he's a very accomplished harpist. He learned uh, to play the harp from leading Paraguayan uh, harpists in, in Paraguay. And um, when he came to the United States, he was immediately taken up um, by some of the major venues in, in New York City. So he's played at Lincoln Center, um, at the Kennedy Center. He's also played at the White House in, in Washington. So uh, without further ado, let's put our hands together and welcome Don Silvio Solis to the stage. <laughs>
para el querer de toda la haya. Mas si en lograr amor te empeñas, debe ser ella una bella paraguaya. Ser paraguaya lo proclama el mirar pleno de dulzura, de ternura, el talle que al andar derrama y muele sal en la cintura. Cuando su esposo va a la guerra Ella es el alma que resguarda fiel su casa Ella es el alma de su tierra Ella es el alma luminosa de su raza Nunca veréis que haga la red En su dolor, en su inocente regocijo El hombre héroe Tierra de valientes, el más valiente entre valientes queda preso. Cuando unos labios sonrientes, su miel de hechizo le prometen con un beso. Rubias, morenas o trigueñas, mujeres hay para el querer de toda la haya. Más si el lograr amor de Paraguaya, debe ser ella Paraguaya, debe ser ella Paraguaya, debe ser ella Paraguaya. Soy tu ardiente soñador, dame un poco de agua fresca. 
Hi, what, what a pleasure to be able to um, ask a few questions. Uh, we have a little moment here where uh, I can ask a few, and if there's anyone in the audience who would like to ask a, a question, if um, I, I'm going to ask a few, and then um, I'll take a look out and uh, just wave your hand, and we can give you a moment to ask a question. So um, I guess I'll start with um, Don Silvio. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you learned to play the harp and what some of your earliest memories of playing the harp were? First of all, thank you so much for the opportunity and thank you for everyone for coming tonight. And I want to explain a little bit about uh, how, how old I started playing the harp when I was eight, eight years old. So, still, I keep him playing, and now I'm, I'm 30. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, and um, I know that um, dance is a, a, an art form that takes an awful lot of practice and dedication. And I wonder if um, any of the dancers this evening would like to just tell us a little bit about what is it that drives you to keep doing this music? Is there a special uh, part of the dance that, that really moves you to keep it going? I know that it's a heritage tradition, but what is it that, that about this particular kind of dance that keeps you making all this effort uh, to bring it to the stage? Hi everyone, my name is Monica. Um, and I guess to, and first of all, thank you so much um, everyone for coming out. Um, I think one of the most um, important parts that keeps us motivated, I'd say, is um, I guess perhaps that we are a very small community um, in New York, uh, specifically of Paraguayans. Um, and so when we get together, it's, it's, it's very, um, we, we get very um, passionate about, um, you know, all of our cultures. And uh, Badawai is pretty, is pretty large and has people from all over um, Badawai. So some of us are from the city, like Asuncion, the capital. Some of us, like Vivi's family, is from um, a little more in the ranch, uh, um, in the country, perhaps. And so I think um, all of us ha each have our own special reasons, but all of us together, we one, love dancing, and two, um, we, you know, have our differences, and I think it's really fun to get together and um, dance. <laughs> Thank you. And so, um, to, you know, keep educating people about the Paraguayan communities in New York, um, my understanding is that there's a significant community in Mineola. Um, would you like to speak to where else um, uh, people from the community live in the New York area or around the country? Hello, I'm Vivi. Um, and we are pretty much scattered. There's some in Westchester, there's in Queens. Um, Queens is in Flushing and in College Point. And we have some in Jersey. And it's very small, but when we get together, we can fill up the room. You know, we bring our passion and we want to show our culture because we are proud of it. And we want to keep it alive for many, many generations. Thank you. Okay, thank you all so much. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick look out into our audience. Does anyone have a question that they would like to ask? Okay, I see one person. I'm going to come down and give you the mic, and you can ask the question. I have the mic. I have a mic. Uh, thank you. Uh, the dancing was beautiful, and Mr. Silva was fantastic. Uh, great entertainment and uh, familiarizing us with your culture. Um, I am taken by the lace. Is the lace handmade or is this machine made? Hi, my name is Ashley, and uh, the lace is called Nyanduti, which is Guarani. 
And it basically means spider web. It's a handmade design that is woven on a fabric stretched by wood. And it can be very difficult to do because it's almost like weaving in between each line. But in the end, they come out beautiful. And they can be used. This is a bastidor. They can be used in decoration. They can be used in clothes. And it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, sto it's sewn on a fabric. And then afterwards, it can be cut off. And it can be put into a dress like ours. There are many different designs that can be done. But this is the original. Hello, my name is Ileana, and the flower used most commonly in the fabric sewn is the murukuya flower, which is a passion fruit. It's the national flower of Paraguay. It's found a lot in Brazil, in parts of South America, in the rainforest. So it's our official flower, which is why you see the design in a lot of the skirts and the earrings. They also make hair pieces. Um, now we've developed bags, and there's a whole fashion line of nyanduti. Uh, we were in Japan in 2018, and a Japanese Paraguayan who lives in Japan actually wrote one of the first books all about nyanduti. Um, you can look that up. I think she sells on Amazon. She's got a great book with all these designs and different styles. And you know the Japanese culture, they have fashion for everything. Thank you. Sure. So if you would like to uh, look up more information about that, that's spelled N-A-N-D-U-T-I. <laughs> so I also want to take just a moment to acknowledge the founder of um, this ensemble, and that's Berta Gauto. So she's up there on the second tier. So if we just want to um, send her our greetings. Um, if there aren't any other questions, I guess we can finish off. We do have a finale performance coming. So thank you all for turning up. Um, there are more um, celebrations in this series. And we hope to see you at another um, World, World oh, Sunday. I guess um, Kelly may have another moment. Oh, OK, there's another uh, question. I'm sorry. I was wondering about your, in, in the name of your company, Golden Butterfly. If you could elaborate on that, please. Thank you for the question. Yes, vale panambi vera. Panambi means butterfly, and vera means golden or shiny or brilliant. Um, we just translate it directly to golden butterfly because it just sounds beautiful. The thing about Guarani is one word can have several different meanings depending on where it's placed in the sentence. Uh, it's a beautiful language. It's mostly sounds. Um, Vivi here, she actually speaks Guarani fluently. And the word Panambivera was uh, created by, well, the name Panambivera was created by the founder, Berta Gauto, uh, after the monarch butterfly. It's, it's the color of our dresses. It's yellow. Well, it's orange, but it gives off this, like, awe-like feeling when you see a butterfly flying around. And that's what we represent in our dance company is the movement of a butterfly and the socialization of a butterfly and how it goes from flower to flower and place to place. And it brings joy. So we try to represent that in our dances, in our expression, in our fashion, in our hair, in our makeup. And we really try to replicate what a butterfly is in its essence. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And just a reminder that um, if there's anyone who's interested in learning this tradition, um, this ensemble does teach the music and the dance. Um, so if there's a you know, person who you think might be interested in learning the harp or um, beginning to learn the dance, um, that's uh, something you can follow up on. Uh, LongIslandTraditions.org. Um, you can also Google Berta Gauto, G-A-U-T-O, and um, you'll, you'll um, be able to stay in contact with the group. So we, we thank you again for coming, and uh, I guess we'll move to the finale. Okay. Do we have one? Okay.
Yeah, for anyone who didn't hear the question, uh, it's, uh, the question is um, say something in Guarani or, okay. Thank you. Um, Bae Shapa, Sherera, Viviana, Este Dia, Shea Jeroku, She Grupo, Di Panam Vivera, Hashea Wije, Kendei, Coape, I'm sorry. I will ask Kendei, Coape, Kendei, so basically, I said that, hello, um, my name is Viviana. Thank you for being here. You know, today I was dancing with my group, Ana Vivera, and we hope you enjoyed um, our dance. Thank you.